strong man. Yeah. He's stronger than I am. Yes. I need somebody to deliver me. Read. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. I want you to see this law of sin. Look at the 23rd verse. Look at the 23rd verse. The latter part of the 23rd verse. Read that 23rd verse. But I see another law in my members. I see a law working in my members. We talked about the law. Working in my members. A law. An established right. So you say, I have a right to this body, and I'm touching the flesh, and, it, and, I'm, and I'm going to cause this body to do what I desire it to do. He started alone. Listen to it. Warring against the law of my mind. Mm -hmm. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. That's why I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight that. The law of sin is in the members of the unbeliever. Those who don't know God, there's a law of sin working in their members. And that law of sin produces evil concupiscence. Look up that word in the scriptures. It simply means a craving for sin. Oftentimes we go to fornication when we talk about a craving for sin. But sometimes we just have a craving to just do something wrong. We have a craving to just tell someone off. A craving, you know, so people get um, angry quick. They want to fight, you know. We have a craving for sin. We have a craving to exalt ourselves. That's pride. We have a craving to do that. Are, are you seeing that? That's a law of sin working in your members. Now, let me, let me give you a little definition that, that I came up with about the law of sin. You will always sin in your body and your soul as long as Satan lives in you. Mm -hmm. As long as this unclean spirit, this corruptible spirit, is inside of your body, you will sin. You are corrupted. It, is, it has corrupted your soul, your conscience, your spirit, and your flesh. It's a law of sin. And that law is so powerful. It's just like the law of gravity. You cannot jump off a building and go up. That's how the law of sin is. You cannot perform righteousness. You might be a do-gooder. There may be some things that you do good. You may be a church girl. Hello? But there's always going to be something that manifests that you are not really born of God. There's going to be some righteousness you cannot perform. There's, and, and, and one of the first things that you notice about that is that there is a um, it's, it's, it's very difficult for the unsaved to have the sentiments of Christ. You, and, you, and, and you'll have those sentiments. You'll, 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 you'll agree with God here. You'll agree with him there. You'll agree with him over there. But there's going to be something that you don't agree with God in. You may say you do, but you'll do the opposite. That's, the, that's, that, that's that person that is not born again. Because why? Because there's an influence. You can learn. You can, get, you can go to church and learn behavior. You can learn how to act. You can learn all the right things to say. But there's going to be something about you that shows that you cannot live holy. Are you hearing God? You, there, there's, there's going to be even some sentiments. Your conversation in some areas, even though you say all the right things in this and say all the right things there, there's going to be an area that reveals that you don't have a sentiment of God. Are y'all hearing God? You're hearing God. 
So, now, why did I go through that? I want you to see that there's a law working. There's a law working. It's in your flesh for you to do evil. And as long as that spirit is there, you're going to do evil in this flesh. Are you hearing God? And remember what he also said. He said, it caused our nature to change. Caused Adam's nature to change. And that was prevalent, remember, when Cain and Abel were born. Mm -hmm. Amen. Cain killed Abel. Where did he get that spirit from? He was born with it. Adam passed it down to him. The, the seed. The devil was in the seed. And they, those kids came forth with that. Amen. And so Satan used Cain to kill Abel. Are you, are you hearing God? Yes. Amen. All right. Glory to God. So now, another thing I want us to look at. Uh, I, I, another thing I want us to look at. If then, if then, this man is sold under sin, right? All right. If he's sold under sin, how could that be a saint? If there's a law working in his members, and he cannot, is there a law working in his members, and he and he can't do what's holy? How's that a saint? I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, never to even question it again, that the seventh chapter of Romans is not about a saint. It's about a sinner. Don't ever question that again. Let me prove it even further for you. Glory to God. This seventh chapter of Romans says in the fifth verse, read the fifth verse. For when we were in the flesh, mm -hmm. The motions of sin, sins which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Now that's a capsule of everything he's saying in the rest of the chapter. He just took the rest of the chapter to explain it. He said that when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, the emotions, the desires, the affections of sin worked in our members or in our body when we were in the flesh. We were in the flesh along with this thing here that took over our flesh. When our soul was in the flesh. Hmm? When our soul was in the flesh, the emotions of sin worked in our body to bring forth fruit unto death. Brought forth sin. Brought forth sin. But turn over to the 8th chapter. In the 8th verse. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, my goodness, he just said when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin did work in our members to bring forth fruit under death. When we were in the flesh, is that right? Look at the ninth verse. But ye are not in the flesh. Wait a minute. The church is not where? In the flesh. We're not there. Why? But in the spirit. But where are we? In the spirit. Where are we? In the spirit. Uh-huh. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. If the spirit of God is dwelling in you, then you're in the spirit. Come on. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now if you don't have Christ's spirit, you don't belong to Christ, and you live in the flesh. And you're going to do those things that people in the flesh do. Come on, are you hearing God? So what does this mean? So you are no longer in the flesh, if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You are in the Spirit. Now let's let this right here be the Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. Amen? So now, when you get saved without going through all of every little uh, aspect of of, 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 of of redemption I just want to show you the, the meaning of those scriptures the ones we just read is that alright yes. amen when God save us when he save us this is what he does 
he takes let's just walk through it he takes this spirit out but he's not going to live with this he's going to take the devil out you out of that body right. <laughs> somebody said thank, thank you so he's going to take this devil out He's evicted. Now what's left? The soul, this old sinful soul. And this sinful body. Is that right? Body full of sin, soul full of sin. But what was the cry? The cry was, Lord, save me. Lord, save my what? Save my what? Because I know my body going back to the dust, but God save my soul. I want to go to heaven. I want to live with you forever. Is that what we cried out? Saved means preserved. It means that the soul is preserved. Protected. So now what God does is this. He said, okay, you want me to save you? Humble yourself. Get on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> and what God does, what God does is this, saints. He takes the soul out of the body. Yes. And because did it say we're no longer in the flesh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. No longer in the flesh? In the flesh. So if, 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 if I'm no longer in the flesh, the body... Without the spirit is dead. dead. The body can't live without the spirit. Is that right? So if he takes my soul out of my spirit, then my body is dead. Did we not see that Jesus died for us? Hello? And, and he, we got to do the same thing he did? He died. Now, he takes my soul out of the flesh. Places it in the spirit. Place it in the spirit. This is my life. This is who I am. That's going back to the dust one day. But this going to live in somewhere. So, you put it in the spirit. In his spirit. It's in Jesus. My soul is in Jesus. Can y'all see that? My life is hidden with Christ in God. My life is hidden with Christ in God. So now, Christ says, I paid for that body though. It's mine. It's mine. So I'm going to finish my ministry in that body. So I'm going to get back in it. I'm going to get in this body. And when he, but first, I'm going to circumcise it. I'm going to cleanse it. I'm going to sanctify it. Thessalonians. 523, 2 Thessalonians 523. Thy whole body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless, sanctified, and preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now he sanctifies that flesh and he gets in it. And when he gets in it now, the body revives. This happens by the time you can blink your eye. We, we were at the altar crying out for salvation. Glory to God. And some of us, he came to the altar and got us. Hallelujah. And some of us might have been driving our car and soon and got saved. Glory to God. Might have been washing dishes and got saved. Come on, somebody. But we remember the day. Hallelujah. Because when, because when he circumcised the flesh, sin lifted up off of it. Hallelujah. And I want to add, too, that he also circumcised the soul so that that, that sin in our soul was lifted up. And we, we, we were so light. And, we, and now, wait a minute. Now, hold it. No, 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 hold it. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'll get to this later, but might as well say it now. 
I'm not just wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in there. I'm joined to this. So he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So I've been joined to the Lord, and that's what Jesus meant when he said, Father, make them one as we are one. Amen? And then he revived that body. Now, this is, this is what I want you to see before we go to break. Before we take a little break here, this is what I want you to see. What's touching the flesh? Is that Jesus touching the flesh? So where you at? You hid in him. So you're not in the flesh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. We're going to break right here for a few minutes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take it loose. Especially about the not touching the flesh. Excuse me, Saints. Saints, we're going to break for lunch. You have approximately 50 minutes. We'll be back at 12.30. Session 2 will start at 12.30. Sounds good to me. Lifestyle. We had our lifestyle <clears throat> right along with other sins. That's what he said. He said we did the same things they did. Amen. Our times passed. We go to God. We had our conversation in times past. In the lust of our what? Flesh. The lust of our flesh. And I really want to take the time for you to really understand. Um, this whole salvation experience um, and why it was necessary because you know if I'm you know I'm a person that that when you teach me something don't just tell me what to do teach me the why I because see when you teach people what to do you make robots out of them but when you teach them why the why inside of doing it now they learn they learn. And uh, <clears throat> you got to be able to teach people why they need salvation. Why do I need Jesus? And let me tell you something. Most theologians 
80% of the theologians, I'm going to go with what God's number. God said to me back, way back, about somewhere between uh, 25 and 30 years ago, God said to me that 90% of the preachers that's carrying the gospel, he didn't call. So that's nine out of every ten preachers. Nine out of every ten preachers, God say, I did not call them. Amen. I did not call them to carry my word. So most of the ministers <laughs> that's carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ do not know what you're learning today. They do not know it. If they did, you'd be hearing it preached. They would be teaching it. They would be preaching it. They don't know it. We did not know it. We, I did not know it until God gave me the revelation. And I had been preaching the gospel a lot of years. But I didn't know this. I didn't know what I'm preaching now. I did not know it. I did not understand it. And I was reading the same scriptures every day. They have to be revealed by God. Amen. You can't not pick up this Bible and think you can understand it because you've been to college. You got to be articulate. You got to be able to explain things to them. Otherwise, they'll just think that we're just fanatics. We just need something to believe in. No, we got to be intelligent in our delivery of the gospel. I remember a Paul, uh, Apollos and Aquila. They set Apollos down. He was fervent and he was zealous, but he didn't understand fully the scriptures. And these guys set him down. This, this husband and wife team, evangelistic team, set him down and said, Now, wait a minute. You know, do you, you know, they taught him the gospel of Christ, the mystery of Christ after baptism. You see? And so, they, teaching them more perf him more perfectly in the world, Apollos went on to be a great teacher, a great apostle, went on to be a great apostle, a man that had a, had a reputation like. The Apostle Paul. So we have to be articulate. There's nothing wrong with having the right knowledge. We need to have knowledge. We don't need to walk around ignorant of our own salvation. To where when we don't eat, we, we, we're scared to even minister to some people because we're not sure what to say. Come on, let's just be real now. We, we're scared that sometimes we start witnessing and people are going to trip us up in Scripture. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So that's the purpose of these fast tracks. That's the purpose of me coming. Not to just take you all the way through this book. Glory to God. No, you can read this book. But I need to explain to you the essence of what's in the book. I need you, I need you to understand what God trying to make you understand. Glory to God. And I, and I want you to open your heart up to the fact that 90% of the preachers in this world do not know this. They do not know it. We did not know this. God had to teach it to us. And he's only teaching it to that that he finds in apostolic order. He is setting the apostle, this scripture. See, God won't work outside of his own laws. He, he give the law, but he work inside of his law. And God said this revelation of Christ is given to the apostles. And the holy prophets. So if 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 you're not sitting under an apostle, or you're not in a church that is affiliated or sitting under an apostle, you're not getting a complete revelation of Christ. And that's just the truth. That ain't no sales pitch. That's a that's the truth. 
That's why the body is so fragmented. Now, you heard me teach this morning, right? Yeah. Did you learn anything? Yeah. Now, did your soul, did your spirit say, that's God? Yeah. Okay? Now, if your spirit said, that's God, and, and I guarantee that 99% of what you heard this morning, you've never heard it before. I haven't heard it outside of this ministry. And I, that doesn't mean that somebody outside the ministry is not teaching it. I'm just saying you haven't heard it. You know, because I, I haven't heard it. I'm, and I'm sure God may have some other apostles somewhere in other countries or other states or whatever that's teaching the same thing. We just haven't come together yet. So we haven't heard them. So you think God brought you here to hear this message just for you? You think that, that's, that God is just, you know, filling us up with all this knowledge just so we'll be knowledgeable, we'll, we'll be smart people in Christ? No. This message is for the body of Christ. This message is going to be the thing that brings about a reformation in the body. And what I started to say earlier when I was telling you about the vision, God spoke to me recently and reassured me, I am exalting truth. Because I asked him, how are you going to bring the body together? He said, I'm going to exalt truth and my sheep are going to hear my voice. The sheep are going to hear it, not the goats. Because he got some goats in here, in his family, you know, in his church. But he said, the sheep are going to hear the voice. And another, they will not follow. The sheep are not going to follow foreign shepherd. So when the sheep now are waiting to hear the voice of the chief shepherd. And the voice of the chief shepherd sounds like truth. And that's who they're going to follow. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. So that's where we are right now. So that's why I'm taking my time and saying you got to learn this terminology. And you got to learn these scriptures. You got to look inside these scriptures again and see what's in them. Amen. And that's what we're about to do with this Ephesians scripture here. Uh, in Ephesians 2 uh, and 2. Glory to God. I want you to know that when, when it says that we walked according to the prince of the power of the air, we know that to be who? We know that to be Satan, the spirit. So we know that Satan is a spirit. He has a spirit. He's, yes, he's an angel, but he also has a spirit. Are you working with me? That now worketh in the children of disobedience. That spirit of Satan works in the children of disobedience. So much so now, hold that right there, because we're coming right back to it. And, and look at, now, now, now Paul said that spirit working in the children of disobedience. Look what Jesus said. Go to St. John, 8 chapter. Let's see how it worked. Verse 44, what does it say? Now, look, let's read, let's read 43. Let's, let's read verse 43, 8 and 43, and then 44. Let's hear what it says. Why do ye not understand my speech? Why can't you understand me? I'm the son of God. Listen to Jesus. See, I don't feel so bad when... when <laughs> But they didn't understand him either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, why can't you understand me? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil. Because you cannot hear my word. You can't hear what I'm saying. And so that, and I want to, I want to say, encourage pastors, when you're ministering, everybody's not going to receive what you're saying. And 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 um and let me let me go right here, glory to God. Let me go right here, because this is the thing that the Holy Ghost is saying. You know, sometimes, sometimes when 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 um, it's something else being a pastor, saints. Sometimes as a pastor, sometimes as a pastor, you may learn of a situation in the, in the church with your members, right? With a member. And um, a member may be, have a mindset 
that member may have a mindset. And you, and you start dealing with that mindset. And in dealing with that mindset, you begin to realize that that person not the only one got that mindset. That's just a mind, that's just the way the church think. You know? And so as a as a good shepherd, you begin to preach on that mindset. Because you realize that a lot of people got that mindset. So you start preaching on it. And that's how we get in trouble. Because the person that we actually dealt with with the mindset, the first thing they're gonna say, now why not? Why is she preaching on me? And she just counseled me about that yesterday. Now she up there preaching on it. Glory to God. But it's not that you're preaching on the person, but you realize that, that you, God just, re, in, that, in that counseling session, God was revealing to you. Because you're not going to go there and just tell every, you know, the details of the counseling session. You're preaching on the mindset. Because God, what God is doing is showing you that this is how my people think. And you need to address this. With my people, that's why he allow you to counsel such things. So you can bring that wisdom back to the church. Amen. He'll show you where a person, he may use one person to show you where a mindset is that a lot of people got. And you now come and minister on that mindset and that original person get offended. So, oh, Lord, I ain't telling her nothing else. <laughs> she, she, you know, God. she just preaching on me. But that's really not the case, saints. We try to preach on the mindset. You, 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 know, you know what I'm saying? We try to preach on the mindset. Glory to God. Amen. Um, so, <laughs> Jesus did that a lot. Jesus, uh, Jesus saying to these people here, he said, you can't, you can't. Look at what he said. Jesus said unto them, if you were my father, in the 42nd verse, if you were my father, you would love me. You will love me. But I, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And then he goes on to say, why, you, why can't you understand me? Why can't you understand me? Glory to God. Even because you cannot hear my word. You can't hear what I'm saying. I've been in counseling sessions and I've had to say to people, you're not hearing me. You're not even listening to me. Because the devil got your mind over here. Your focus is right here on this and God talking about that. But you way back over here. You got stuck over here. You, you got stuck right here. Something I said way back here. And you got stuck back there. And God done moved from there over here. And you're not even hearing this. You can't hear this because the devil got you back here. That's what Jesus was telling these people. You know, y'all been sitting up here questioning me and whatnot. But you don't even hear what I'm saying. You think you're talking to me. You're not talking to me. Cause, because talking is a two-way situation. You, 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 not, you can't even hear what I'm saying. Are you hearing God? He's saying, you can't even hear what I'm saying. Why? Why can't you hear? You can't hear my word. Because you of your father, the devil. And no matter what I say, how much you hear me preach, because you are of your father, his lust you will do. If his father, if Satan wants you to kill me, that's what you're going to do. If, if he lusts to kill me, that's what you're going to do. If he lusts to, to, to entrap me or trick me in some way, that's what you're going to do. He's working his, his lust out through you. Now notice what he said. It's his lust you will do. Now back over here to Ephesians. You walked according to the prince of this world. According, uh, according to the prince of the power there. The spirit that's now working in the children of disobedience. Notice this. Paul is saying that there's a spirit of Satan working in you. Jesus is saying that spirit makes Satan your father. Are you seeing that? So I want you to be able to go back and forth to these scriptures. 
Jesus is, uh, G, uh, Paul says, the spirit, Paul calls him the prince of the power of the air. That's what Paul called him. He said, you walk according to the, uh, the power of the prince of the air. The, uh, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Jesus said, you have your father, the devil. You just want to call him what he is. The devil. And his loss you will do. Paul said he working in you. Jesus said his loss you do. You, get, you got that? They both saying the same thing. They are both saying the same thing. Paul said he working in you. What do you mean he's working in you? He is doing what he want to do through your body. Whatever it is, he, if you want to lie, he lying through your body. If you want to steal, he uses your body to steal. If he want to commit fornication, he uses your body to commit fornication. Satan is using your body to enjoy sin. He needed a body to enjoy sin. Pleasures that he wanted to experience. He wanted a human body so that he could experience those pleasures. You ever seen, you have, well, you've heard of, of, of Satanism and, you know, uh, uh, all kind of devious and degrading sexual acts and whatnot. Who gets pleasure out of that but the devil? The devil gets pleasure out of that. You know, the, 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 and, and when people, they're, they're, I, I remember years ago I taught a lesson on, on sexuality in the church and, and uh, how... There's some people that, that in, in their, in their um, sexuality, they like to be whipped. Consensually, they want to be whipped. Now, don't you know that's a satanic desire? It's not normal for a human being to want to be beaten. That's, that's, not, a, that's not normal, but, but they get pleasure out of it. Why are they getting pleasure? Because they are joined to Satan. And it's his lust. He gets pleasure out of allowing the human body to be beaten and, de and degraded and defaced and humiliated. Humiliation. He gets pleasure out of that. He gets pleasure out of being a pimp. Amen. Being a pimp and having all these women and having and, and having control over them and making them do what it is he wants them to do. He gets pleasure out of child abuse. He gets pleasure out of sexual abuse. He gets pleasure out of the spirit of control. He gets pleasure out of that. He gets pleasure out of uh, raping someone. He gets pleasure out of scheming and conniving and uh, uh, backstabbing someone. He gets pleasure out of that. Satan gets pleasure from those things. And guess what? Because our soul was joined to him, we did too. Some of those things we got pleasure out of. And don't pat yourself on the back because you might have not been one that want to be whipped. But there was some other stuff you did. <laughs> Come on. I said, well, I, that's, that's just that's just divert. That's just perverted. Glory to God. Well, there was some other stuff we did that just as perverted. <laughs> Hello. Praise the Lord. Even iniquity is a perversion of who we are. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I wanted you to see that St. John 8 and 44 is saying the exact same thing that Ephesians 2 and 2 is saying. Okay. So when you have to explain these. You'll, you'll be able to go from one scripture to the other. Okay, are we learning? Yes. Amen. Okay. Um, now, let's look, at, let's look at a scripture, a scripture that was quoted way back in Ezekiel somewhere, in Ezekiel that says the soul that sins must, shall die. Soul that sins sh shall die. Now, when Ezekiel was writing, Ezekiel was writing to the, 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 the children of, of Israel, Right? who were under the law. So, those, um, let's, 
those uh, uh, Jews that were under the law, what's the difference now? Let's look at the difference. If, if Ezekiel said a soul that says shall die, and he's writing, he's, he's writing to, the, to the Jews, and, um, and the Jews were under the law, right? He's saying that soul now that commits a sin and is not, does not bring the right atonement, he does not bring the right sacrifice, he shall die. He's just going to perish. He's going to be cut off completely. Are, are you hearing this? But now let's see what that means in contrast to the new covenant. I want you to see what, what that means in contrast to the, to the new covenant. Let's stay in Ephesians. Because remember this operation when I said the soul was taken out of the flesh. And when the soul was taken out of the flesh, flesh died. It died. Right? Because the body without the spirit is dead. Now, I want you to think about your approach to God when we didn't know God and we were coming to church or somebody ministered to us and we were convinced of salvation I want us to hear this really really good because God is about to explain something that we didn't understand when we approached God we were staunch sinners weren't we and what did we say God save me. God save me. Now, now John May, when you ask God to save you, Pastor Robert, when you ask God to save you, you have been around a long time. And you had met other saints that had been saved, right? Before you were ever saved. You met other saints that were saved. But now in the course of your lifetime, there were some people that you really believed were saved. Right? But you also saw some people that you believed were saved die. We saw a lot of saints die. And, this, and it were people that we really believed were saints. Is that right? Amen. So we saw the people of God actually dying. And, and uh, so when it came time for us to meet God or to approach God, we understood in our mind that we're going to die one day. Isn't, isn't that right? We're going to die and we're going to spend eternity somewhere. So in our approach to God, we came to God with that knowledge. Then I'm going to die one day, and I'm going to spend eternity somewhere. But we understood that our body was going to the dust. Science even showed us that, that the body was going back to the dust. We understood if we put a man in the grave, amen, he go back there a few days later, a few weeks later, and he done turned to, to, to something. Amen? So when we approached God, we asked him to save what? Save my soul. Now this is what we didn't understand about that. We didn't understand what we were asking him to save our soul from. Fully. We understood that we were asking God to save our soul from hell. Right? Don't let me go to hell. Now, I still feel like that. <laughs> Save me from hell. Don't, don't let me go to hell. But I want you to see something here. The Holy Ghost want us to see. Um, 
Look in 1 Corinthians. Hold where you at now. Hold Ephesians. We'll be back there. Look in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And the 54th verse. When this body that I'm in, this corruptible body, has put on what? Incorruption. Mm -hmm. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Mm -hmm. Then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Uh-huh. Okay, now this is what this is what um, Paul was saying to the Corinthian church. He's saying, "Oh death, where is thy sting? And oh grave, where is your victory?" In other words, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. That's the power that's in death. The only thing that allows death to hold you is sin. If you have no sin, death don't have no power over you. Y'all don't hear me. That's why Jesus had to submit to death. Death had no power over him. Let me show you something here. Glory to God, I thank you. Here's say my Oh death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? You can't even hold the body down. Glory to God. You can't the the grave couldn't over, couldn't even hold Christ's body. Yeah, let it go. I, 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 are you hearing God? Now let me show you how that relates to us. Back here, in uh, in uh, cause because and this is the question. See, some people are asking when this situation took place. When this situation took place, salvation comes alone, and God wants to save us. God gets rid of the spirit of iniquity, then it takes the soul out, the body dies. Does the, does the soul die? Why you say no? Why do you say no? I just, if you said no, I want to know why you say no. Huh? Is what? <laughs> Poor soul, they don't know what happened to you. <laughs> it's preserved and protected, but did it die? Did it die? Now, huh? <laughs> Let's look at this. I want you to read. I want the, 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 you know the Bible tells us. 
to rightly divide. Let me say that. I want you to go right back to that Ephesians chapter. Let's go right back there. What does the first verse say? You were what? You were what? You can't be brought alive until you're first dead. So you were already. So when Satan, when, when the soul was in here like this, he was innocent. Now, see, I'm trying to teach you how to connect the dots with the scriptures, right? Let's, let's, let's go back and connect the dots of the scriptures I just gave you. That's why you got to get the video and watch them over and over again till you get it. You cannot be presumptuous and foolish enough to think that you can understand this listening to it one time. All right? Watch this. Look what the scripture says. In, in Romans 5th chapter. Remember? That great Romans 5 chapter. The 12th verse. Read it everybody. Let's read it together. Romans 12 and 5. What does it say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Romans 5 and 12. What does it say? And so what? Death did what? So death passed down. If sin came in, and the sting of sin this, um, de is death, this sin is the sting of death. And if sin was passed on to every man, so was death passed down to every man. So when you were born, you were born. So even though you were walking around, you were walking, you were walking. So Hollywood didn't first come up with the walking dead. We were the walking dead. We were the Adam, the day you touch this tree, you shall surely die. He walked around 900 more years. But he was what? Dead. dead. What was dead? He died. The soul. And you know what? Because now, we had the soul and run away. Praise you, Jesus. So, so y'all couldn't figure out what to do with me, so I left. Oh. <laughs> this, because the soul was minding his business, but then when he messed up, this took over. Now he did it. He's full of sin. He's a part of this. He's full of sin and trespasses. And he is alienated from God. He's separated from God. He can't even get to God. God, he can't, he can't, he can't. Poor thing. Poor thing. He can't get to God because this is taken over. Y'all got that? Yeah. So the soul was already there. Now let me show you how else. Couldn't read the scriptures the way they're written. Go back to Ephesians 1 and 1. And 1. Read that scripture again. And you, you have he brought alive, quick, two and one, I'm sorry, Ephesians two and one, you have he quickened, that means you he brought alive, who were what? You were already, trespasses and sins, now, watch this. Um, 
in Hebrews. Let's see if we can, I can find it here. Um, Hebrews talks about our conscience. Somebody find that. All you smart students. No. Um, our conscience was dead in trespasses. Somebody find that scripture so we can we can put it on the uh, on the tape. Some of you smart saints that study your Bible twenty four seven. I think it's the ninth or tenth chapter. I was just reading this. Uh, it couldn't the the offers that were made could not make the com the the people um, that offer those sacrifices perfect. Okay, all right. Look at look at the tenth chapter. Look at let's go to the tenth chapter. This is the scripture I'm looking for. Look in uh, Hebrews ten, and the second verse says, "For then with let's see, let's well let's put in context the first verse. Read the first verse." For the law having a shadow of good things to come. Mm-hmm. They couldn't be made perfect. Why? Listen to why. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Mm -hmm. Because that the worshippers once heard should have had no more conscience of sin. All right. Their conscience, their conscience was full of sin. And if your conscience is full of sin, death reigns. Because the sting of death is sin. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. So we were already dead in sins and trespasses. Well, let's see if you if you don't understand that. Go to Colossians. Colossians the second chapter. Same thing he said to the Ephesian church. He said it to the church at Colossians. Two and thirteen star. And you being dead in your sins. Being what? No. So the soul was already dead. Body was walking around with a dead soul in it, <laughs> just like Adam. You were what? Being dead in your sins and the Flesh uncircumcised, unclean. Because your soul was dead, your flesh was unclean. That's what he said. Your flesh was full of sin. Go ahead. All right. So in other words, he did what? He quickened you. Brought you back alive. Brought you back alive. So in other words, when you ask the question, did the soul die? Yes, it died when Adam sinned. Your soul died when Adam sinned. Because death was passed down to every creature. Soul was already dead. Born dead. That's why the scriptures say, when you backslide, now you're twice dead. That's why you got to be born again. That's why you have to be born again. Because in the born again process, what does he do? He gets rid of that spirit that killed the soul. Alienated it from God. He gets rid of that. Takes the soul. Put it inside of himself. The body is dead. In a, in a microsecond before you can 
blink your eye. He done took you out, put you in him. This revived the soul. This is this quickened the soul. And then the spirit in the body quickened the body. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your what? Mortal body. Raise your body up. You learning? You got you got to know this now. That's why we're taking our time. When and this is something God told me to do. Go to the different works. Go to the works and explain this to make sure that everybody in this ministry know and understand this operation. I make myself clear. That's why I want you to. I want you. You know, saints. Let me tell you something. We spend so much money on junk. It's time for us to spend money on our ministry. You need to invest in your own ministry. You do. You, if, if I come out with a lesson, you need to get it. You need to buy that lesson. I don't care what it takes. Glory to God. You need to get that. You need to get it and you need to study it. And, and, and I'm looking at, I'm, you know, I, for, for, this will be the third week now we've been doing discipleship. And I'm looking at the people that are conscientious enough to go and get that lesson so that they can go back to it, you know, in the discipleship session on Monday, that they can go back to that lesson and study that lesson. Because you think about today, all the things that we're talking about today, you're not going to remember all this. You're not going to remember all this. You need to make sure that you have this so you can go back and forth. And I'm sitting here taking my time going lesson for lesson. I don't want to be standing. I don't want this to be a preaching session. I want us to. I want to be a teaching session. I want us to learn, glory to God. And I want you to learn how to connect the dots. I want you to learn how to deal as evangelists. Do the work of an evangelist. Go out there and tell people about this message. Tell your children about it. Tell your parents about it. Tell your loved ones about it. Your friends, your boss. Tell everybody about it, glory to God. In every conversation you get in, you need to be able to un to articulate this. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if, you, you, if you're afraid, a lot of people don't witness because they're afraid that they're going to get tripped up. Glory to God. But I want you to be so versed in this that you could talk to a pastor. You can sit down with a pastor and show him the scriptures. That's what God raising you up to do. This is, this is not just another church service. This is discipleship, breaking this word down in detail, showing you now how this scripture matches with that scripture. Hello? And, so, and, and trying to create scenarios for you so you'll understand where to go when, when, when you're talking about something. What scriptures to go to. Does that make sense? So it's time now to invest in your lesson. You know, I tried to keep it down five bucks, five bucks every Monday night, just, just five dollars. And I'm sitting there looking to see who are the ones that are conscientious enough to do that. And, and, and you know, there's some people that, that, that are making sure they get the lesson, but there's some that are not. But then, too, let me, let me say this. You have to be careful of this mindset. You have to be careful that you are not that you don't feel like you need it because you understand it. You got to be careful of that. But you know why I say that? Because I've been teaching this over 25 years. And I'm just learning some things. Every time I teach it, I learn something. So don't be presumptuous to think that, well, a doc teaching on the new man or she teaching on the old man or the new creature or whatever, I already understand that. So I don't really have to get that lesson. Don't, don't be presumptuous because every time I teach it, something else comes out. And I'm learning every time I teach it. I'm learning. So if I'm learning, I know you can be learning. Amen? I just want to say that, say, because I'm watching and I'm seeing because, because there's about to be a fork in the road. Because God is, is, is going to use me now to take those people that are really following. Everybody's not following. But those people that are really following, I'm fixing to take them in a different, take them onto a different course. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a split in the what it means when it when it talks about the uh, the soul, <coughs> whether the soul died, Amen, glory to God, or whether it liveth. 
Now, there's a scripture in that we're going to talk about in, in, in summary of what we was talking about, and then we're going to talk about in subject in our next session. Watch this. Um, Romans 14 and 9. Mm -hmm. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Uh oh. Now this is this this scripture here just man, it just hit the nail right on the head. It says to this end to this end. Hallelujah. Christ both what? He died and rose and revived. Now he died. He died. Watch this now. This is Christ. Let's make this Christ this time. Christ died. But I want to show you something. Let's look at Christ. I want you to see something that is going to be vital to our next lesson. Um, can I switch pins with you? You have a silver pin. Somebody had a silver pin. Blue is fine. All white. She got a white one here. Okay. Let's make this Christ. Okay. Um, but let's make this his soul. This is. Remember he said. The Lord will not leave my soul in hell. Right. So let's make this his soul. I want you to see Christ. Um, there's a scripture in, I believe it's St. John. Uh, some of you scholars can find it right where Christ said, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. Where is that? That's the 17th chapter of St. John. Mm -mm, ain't no 17 chapter, I don't think. Woo Jesus said, because I live, you gonna live. Thank you. That's where I'm at. St. John 14 and 11th verse. We'll back up. Put it in context. Start at the 9th verse. I want you to understand this. Start at the 9th verse. He's talking to Philip, right? If you see me, you see the Father. If you see me, you see the Father. All right. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. How are you going to? What do you mean by show us the Father? If you looking at me, this listen to Jesus talking. If you looking at me, you see the Father. This is the Father talking. I've been with you all this time and you don't know me yet. When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's what Jesus said. You have seen me, you have seen the Father. Both of them talking to Philip. 
Watch this. Look at this. Read on. Do you believe, watch this, listen to Jesus, don't you believe or do you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Read. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Mm-hmm. Now, the Father that lives dwell me lives doesn't it the father that lives in me is the one that's doing the work wow mm-hmm. look at the 11th verse believe me that i am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very works sake okay believe me that i am in the Father and the Father's in me. Let's see what that means. This is the soul of Jesus Christ. We know he has a soul because he testified God would not leave his soul in hell. Not only that, his soul, watch this, is the one that went and paid the penalty in hell for our sins. This is what Jesus is describing. When the Bible says that Jesus is the seed of Abraham. Have you seen that? And sometimes they call him the seed of David. Right? Offspring of David. Well, when it says he's the seed of Abraham or David's son, amen, it's talking about the flesh. When it says he's the seed of Abraham, it's talking about his body. His body is the seed of Abraham. How so? Mary and, and Joseph, even Joseph, Mary was the offspring of Abraham. She was an offspring. She was also a direct descendant from David. And so was Joseph. Joseph was a descendant from one of David's sons, and Mary was a descendant from the other. So legally speaking, Jesus should have been the king on the throne instead of Herod when he was born. Because if, he, if, if Rome had not usurped authority, they had the child that should have succeeded to the throne. Are you, are you hearing God? Amen. But now, this body that they gave Jesus was a human body. And human bodies have human souls. Hello? A human body has a human soul. Now, I taught a lesson. World Conference, maybe, School of Prophets, maybe. There is no humanity in salvation. Uh huh. I know that's where you went. Praise the Lord. You know, God is always a step ahead of you. <laughs> Amen. You went there the moment I said. That a human body has a human soul. If it didn't, it wouldn't be human. However, oh boy, how do I do this? However, the difference in Jesus' soul and our soul was that Jesus testified, I my being, my soul, is in God. My soul is in God. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And when Jesus talked, he never talked like he was separate from the Father. He always talked like he was joined to the Father. I always talk like he was joined to the Father. Hmm. So now his life is hid in God. Right? 
Jesus' life is hid in God. Where our life at? Give me my life back. Who my life? Oh, here's, here, here's my life. Here's your life. Remember our little soul? Let me show you something. I want you to learn something right now. This is what Jesus was testifying of. He says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. That the Father is in this body, but I am in him. The Father is the one touching this flesh. Do you see that? Do you see that? Now let me fast forward a little bit. I'm a back. I'm a rewind. But let me. Can I fast forward a little bit? Now, when when you read the scripture where it says, "Father, make them one, as we are one. I am in you, you in me, and they in us." This is what he's talking about. Jesus was in the Father, right? Let's take him out. He said, "Okay." Remember Paul said, I want to apprehend the thing that apprehended me? Jesus apprehended our soul himself. Put our soul in him. He is in the Father. Father, make them one. I am in you. You in me. Right? And they in us. So now, this is your body. This is your body. And now your life is hid with Jesus. Remember, I see you right here? This is you right here. Your life is hid with Jesus in God. And then God now gets back in your body. Are you hearing God? Yes. Are you seeing this? It's so I just before we, that that was a that was a fast forward. So let me rewind. This is, I just want to explain to you what the scripture mean when Jesus said, "Me and my Father are one," meaning He is in His Father, right? He's in His Father, but His Father is in this body. And that's, and, and when the scriptures say he never sinned, who's touching the flesh? Is not the father touching the flesh? Creating all these desires and emotions uh, and righteousness? Uh? There's, there's no desire to sin here in his flesh. There's no evil concupiscence. There's no love, spiritual uh, uh, sin running through here, even though this is a human body, just like ours, but the Father is touching the flesh. The Father is touching the flesh, creating that desire for holiness in the body. Because when we sin, our body don't feel right. Isn't that right? So God was touching this flesh, and Jesus never, ever did this. He never usurped authority. He never said, you know what? Some things I need to do now before I leave here. He never did this. So he could use this body to do what he wanted to do. He always, he said, the words that I speak, they are his. Hallelujah. They are his. Glory to God. And he stayed wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God, and let God do whatever he wanted to do with this body. said, now I'm a fellowship with you. See, this, th th and this is the thing that God was showing me. See, I used to say this a long time ago. I said, God died. You know, he came out here and lived with us. He died for humanity. And I can say that to be truthful because he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Right? But this is, this is why God loved Jesus so much. Let me show you why he loved him so much. 
We show why he loved him so much. Hallelujah. This world conference teaching, but let me show you why he he loved him. Because God had a plan. God had a plan. And and um hallelujah. And 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 he had some laws on the book. He had some laws on the book that he knew the devil was gonna hold him to it. You know, and and and, and so God said, Man, I, I need to redeem man. I, I I'm gonna redeem man. But they must be redeemed by man. They gotta be redeemed by a man. You, you, you see that? They gotta be redeemed by a man. So I'm gonna make me another Adam. I'm gonna make another Adam. And 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 I'm gonna satisfy the law that Satan is gonna attack. Because Satan's gonna say he ain't human. He he, he not he not really human. Because God is saying, I'm the only one that can fix this. Me, God. I'm the only one that can fix what Adam and got themselves into. But, and I'm going to fix it because I love them because, because I want them to be my children. And I never stop wanting them to be my children. So I'm going to fix this. I already got this. So, so what God did, now, now I want you to see this. I want you to see, oh, I, I wish you could see it the way I see it. God had a purpose. And we were his purpose. We, it was his purpose to create a new race. It, it was his whole purpose to create sons of God. They were just like him. But just like a man need a woman to have a child. It ain't natural for a man to have a child. A man got to have a, a wife or a woman to have a child. God needed a human being. Come on, somebody. God needed a human being to be the redeemer of the human race. Because his law said the redeemer had to be kinsman to the race that was law. So he had to have a human being. So God now took, hallelujah took the word. Glory to God. The word say, I'll go make new flesh. I'll take on the flesh of humanity. The word did. The word took on the flesh of humanity. Glory to God. And what God did was took the seed of the word and put it in Mary's womb. Now, what Mary did was supply God with that human body. And see, as long as, they, long as he had a human body, he was satisfying the law of kinsmanship. He, he had a human body, and, he, and that human body had to have a soul. Hello? For it to be alive. Had to have a soul. But God did this. When, when, when Jesus was conceived, when he was conceived in the womb, God overshadowed Mary. Hallelujah. He overshadowed Mary. What did he do when he overshadowed Mary? He sanctified her flesh, yeah, because he ain't going to put his son in nothing unclean. But he did something else, that overshadowing. The overshadowing was this. I, that cause, because, see, when your ch anybody here pregnant? Everybody say, oh God, I hope I ain't. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want you to think about this. When your child is in the womb, your child, when that child is conceived, that child is conceived with a soul. Because it's God that gives it life. So so when, when that when that child is conceived to, to be a human being, when it's conceived. Before it ever come out of the womb, it has a soul. So what God did was overshadowed Mary. And God put that soul in him. Jesus' soul. 
He, 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 he put Jesus inside of him. Glory to God. And so the soul of Jesus was in God. The Bible say that soul that is joined to the Lord is one. So Jesus was both one with God. That's why he called himself the Lord from heaven. Because I don't see myself as separated from this. How am I separated from this? This is who I am. I'm one with God. It's not me and God. I'm one with God. That's what he was saying. So God guaranteed. Hallelujah. See, God said, I'm the only one who can do this thing. He said, he said but now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make me another Adam and I'm going down. I'm going to go down. I'm getting in that body. Hallelujah. With my son. Come on, somebody. This going to be my son, but I'm in that body and I'm going to be the one touching the flesh. Glory to God. Amen. I'm going to strengthen him when he get weak. When, when, when it's time for him to go to the cross, I'm going to send the angels of the Lord to, 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 to pray for him and to strengthen him. I'm going to give the angels charge over him. Don't let him stomp his foot on our toe. Don't let him stomp his toe on a rock. The son didn't even know that. So God got you covered, boy. Can't nobody touch you. You can't even fall in and hurt yourself. When they tried to throw him off the cliff, glory to God, he just disappeared. Walked right, they, they couldn't even see him. He had walked right straight through him. Glory to God. Why? Because God, God was, was in that Christ. God was in, God covered him. He clothed him in himself. And God was the one touching the flesh. And that's why when Philip, Jesus kept talking about the father to this and the father that, Philip said, well, just show him to us. And God said, let me, let, me, let me deal with this. Have I been so long with you that you don't know me? And then Jesus said, hey, Philip, guess what? When you see me, you see the Father because this is his body. This is the dwelling place of God. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And, that's, and when, they walked, when Jesus walked up to the temple, glory to God, and he looked around, and, and they were all running their mouth and talking and carrying on, and Jesus said, let me tell you something. You destroy this temple, and I'll raise it up in three days. He talking about this temple, because this is the temple of God. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Y'all got that? Y'all tell God, thank you. He had a plan. God had a plan. And he was a part of the plan. So therefore now, when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus gets to the cross, yeah, I know that's where you want to go now. <laughs> I want you to put this scripture right up before you, 14, Romans 14 and 9. This is vital. I might even let you go home after this. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Romans 14 and 9, because you, you, you just need, and I can finish this. Y'all come to church tomorrow? Huh? No, I'm not a preacher here, ain't I? Oh, this is evening? At 4 o'clock in the evening? Oh. <laughs> and you leaving in the morning? Oh, yeah, I'm being for a lot there then. If they say I'm being for a lot there, I'm here at 4, right? Okay, so we, so we can go more and deep into this at 4 o'clock. Y'all coming back at 4, right? Who coming back at 4 o'clock? Oh, okay. Great. Good. All right. So, <laughs> huh? Can I preach it twice? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> where did I tell y'all to go? Romans well, 14 and 9? Okay. 14 and 9? Okay. Go, Romans 14 and 9 says what? For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived. Okay. That he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Mm -hmm. But why does mm -mm, mm -mm. he? All right. Let's see what the scripture really means. I, when, I, when I read this scripture, I was just like, whoa. 
God, you're just so good. Let's, let's, let's look at it. Now, we just saw, this is Jesus, right? Because this is his body. This is him in God, right? Now, he's got arrested. He has gotten arrested. And when he got arrested, all the sins of the world were placed on him. Right? Now, this is what I want you to notice. I want you to notice that the sins of the world were placed on his flesh, not his soul. His soul was innocent because he personally never sinned. Every sin that was laid upon him was someone else's sin. Now, number two, if his soul had ever sinned, it would have been unlawful for him to go to hell to pay the price for our sin. Because he would have been sinful. Right? But because he wasn't sinful, his soul never sinned, it wasn't lawful for hell to even hold him. That wasn't even lawful. But God, for God to be satisfied, God called for three days and nights of torment. Jesus didn't just go down in hell now and walk around and shoot the breeze with everybody. No. Jesus went to hell and was tormented. And then afterwards, he preached to the people that were sometimes disobedient. When the long suffering of God awaited in the days of Noah, he also preached to the old patriarchs. I'm the one y'all been waiting for. I am the fulfillment of the promise God gave you. You died believing in the promise. The promise is here. Glory to God. But when he, when he was arrested and on his way to the cross now, all this sin was put on him. Right? So what happens? This is the, this is the illustration. What happens? The sin, when, it's because, when he was on the, on the um, cross, he died. He finally died. His body went in the tomb. Right? His body over here in the tomb. Just dead. Full of sin. Right? He had all that corruption. Right? He had been corrupted. It was full of sin. But now the God, what did God do? The Bible say Jesus gave up the ghost. God gone back to heaven. And got out of there. And where did Jesus go? Down into hell. His soul now. Hallelujah. Give me something for hell. His soul is in hell. Poor thing. He in hell. Can y'all see Jesus? He over here in hell. His body in the tomb. His spirit going back to God, to the one that gave it. And his soul is in hell. Soul never sin. Soul is being tormented for our sin. Right? What does the scripture say? For to this end, Christ both died, he's dead. He's dead, separated from God, right? He rose. He rose. Now, wait a minute. He rose, and then it says, and revived. He died. Then God comes back. The Bible says God came. Spirit, God's spirit raising from the east. He said, no Gabriel, no Michael, St. Clair, and all them people they call. He said, none of them people down there. He came himself. Scripture tell us in, in the 70 some Psalm that God mounted up on the wings of a cherub, on two cherubs. 
and came down and got his baby out of here. So he comes down. Watch this. He died. God comes down and raises him. His, he's raised up. His soul is raised up. Now, once he is raised from the pit of hell, watch this. Once he is raised by God, he preached. And the scriptures say he preached by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. He's in hell preaching by the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Peter 3, 23, 24. He preached by the Holy Ghost. And once he finished preaching, he went in the tomb. God took this Jesus, who his life is hid in him. He took this Jesus to the tomb and got back in that body. And then the body was revived from the dead. So he both died and rose and was revived. What was revived? The same body. The same body that he went down with. He revived it. Y'all hearing God? You, do you see that? So now, what does it have to do with us? Oh, Lord. <sighs> now, let's see the scripture. Colossians. I don't know if I should say this for tomorrow, but I'll do it today. Do you see now that how this body is re is resurrected by God? Hallelujah. Let me see. Co go to Colossians three, and also Okay, also Romans 6. All right. Let's go to Romans 6 first. This, this, this verse you should never forget. Romans 6. It's the sixth book of the New Testament, the sixth chapter, and the sixth verse. 666. Six, six. Which six is the number for man. The end of man. 666 six, six is the number for the end of man. The end of the race of man. Not just the Antichrist. The end of man as well. There has to be an end of man because there's an end of. There's a new Adam. All right, let's look at let's look at this. Romans six and six. What is what it says? No, well, back up. Start. Read the fifth verse so that we can uh, keep it in context. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, uh oh, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Okay, so back up to the fourth verse, uh, the third verse. We were baptized into his what? Submerged. Placed by God into his death. How in the world did we get into his death? Jesus died 2,000 years ago. How we got, in, got placed into his death? What in the world does that mean? Well, 
when Jesus, when, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he comes in, God, when God takes you out of your flesh and baptizes you into Christ, remember what we said, how he takes you out of the flesh and puts you in the spirit? You got to remember one thing. The Holy Ghost is an eternal spirit. It has no beginning and no end. So ever, wherever it is, it is always present. So now when you are joined to that spirit, and in the spirit world there's no time or distance. So time is in this world. But when you, when, when, in the spirit world, when you are joined to Christ, if you were joined to Christ today, you were joined to him 2,000 years ago. Hello? Woo-wee. I want to teach the atonement so bad, but I don't have the time. Um, I want the last Adam. Glory to God. Well, let, let's just go with this. It, the Holy Ghost is an eternal spirit. It's an eternal spirit. And so it's omnipresent. So when you got baptized into the Holy Ghost, Wherever the Holy Ghost is, was, been, will go. You there. Because you are joined to that eternal spirit. Are you seeing that? So when the Holy Ghost was on the cross with Jesus, guess who else was on the cross? Every man, woman, and child in the world was on the cross with him. Because he died for the whole world. He didn't just die for us. Do you understand that? Jesus died for God so loved the world, not just the church. He said he loved the world and he died for the sins of the entire world. The only problem is the world has not accepted. The world has not believed and accepted that sacrifice. That's why that is the purpose of the preaching of the gospel. The gospel is supposed to be preached so that the world will know that Jesus died for them too. That's the purpose of preaching. And we, we done twisted up preaching like it's supposed to make us something unique. That it, it, But no, how did you get saved? Somebody had to preach the gospel to you. Somebody had to tell you the gospel. And, 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 and tell you that Jesus had died for your soul, your, your sins. So if he died for your sins when you didn't deserve it, he died for everybody's sin. The scripture said he died for the sin. For God so loved who? The whole world. And he died. And then Paul even said that he died not only for, for our sins only, for the, but for that of the whole world. He died for the whole world. Amen. So everybody's sins have been paid for, but everybody has not accepted the fact that they're paid for. Only those who accept it and believe him and receive it and make him Lord of their lives can be a partaker of the atonement. We'll go into that more to, uh, tomorrow. But only those that receive it can be a partaker of that atonement. Amen. Are y'all working with me? Amen. So now, having died for everybody, let's see where we want to go here. Glory to God. Read. You were in the, the fifth verse. If we were all, if we were what? Have been what? Planted? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, mm -hmm. that henceforth we should not serve sin. All right. Knowing this, now let's see what happened to us. Now our base scripture was, Romans 14 and 9, he both died, rose, and revived. Is that right? Now let's see if he's truly our example. If he's truly our example, if he's the first of many brethren, and if the, and, and if and if what he went through, do we have to go through it? Watch this. Jesus now, the scripture is saying this in the sixth verse, 
You need to know that your old man is crucified with him. What is the old man? The body of sin. What is the body of sin? What flesh? Satan living where? In our body. In other words, before we met God, your body was the body of sin. Come on, let's come on, make the devil mad. Before I met the Lord, my body was a body of sin. And it had to be destroyed. And Satan was my father. Amen? And that body of sin had to be destroyed. It had to be destroyed. Okay, so if the body of sin, now, now watch this here. It said, knowing this, that our old man is crucified. That's how it was destroyed. It was crucified with Christ. So how was it crucified with Christ? See, this is, this is, <laughs> y'all getting into my World Conference teaching now. Amen. Um, this is how we have always seen the atonement. We've seen the atonement as Jesus now on the cross, right? Jesus, Jesus on the cross, and uh, he dies. And then now, a few years later, we come along, and if we accept, you know, as people tell us, do you believe Jesus died for your sins? That he rose the third day? You know? You can be saved. And so we say, yeah, uh-huh. And nothing happens. They give the hand to the preacher, and the preacher tells them they say, "But this is where this is this is the atonement. The atonement works a little bit differently than that. The atonement is the operation of God. God supplied Himself a lamb, a sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ." This lamb was prepared by God. Now, now, now I want you to see this. You got to see this. Because this is a little, it's, it's kind of up there. But if you, if you walk with me, I'll take you there. God prepared Jesus to be the lamb. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 15 calls Jesus the last Adam. Doesn't it? Amen. Now, the first Adam is called Adam because he's the father of the human race. Is that right? The second Adam is Jesus Christ, who is the father of the children of God. He's the, he's, he's the one through which God was able to beget himself children. Right? So he's the author of the church. He's the creator of of the church. Jesus is. He's the last Adam. Now what you got to see about that, what's significant about that, is that in Adam all died. Romans 5. But in Christ all what? <coughs> Live. Hello? Because Christ is the spirit of life. In him is life and there's no life outside of Christ. So all Adam's children were dead. But if I was born in 19-whatever, and you was born in 19-whatever, you was born in 18-whatever, wherever you were born at, glory to God, you, was, you came forth as Adam's child. And it didn't matter if you came forth in 1800s, 1900s, 1600s, 1500s, it didn't matter. You were already in Adam. Jesus. Just like Levi was in the loins of Abraham. Yes, yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. All Adam's children were in Adam's seed. Yes. When you go and pick an apple off of a tree, that apple was, this, was in the seed that was planted to produce that, that tree. That one apple seed produced a whole tree. And so Adam 
seed produced a whole world of people. Right? Yeah. So all every man was in Adam. Every man and woman was in Adam. Now, everyone that comes into the church is already in Jesus. Y'all don't hear me. They already in him. That's why God, the scriptures say, those whom God foreknew. He knew them before they ever was born because they were already in Jesus before Jesus was manifested in time. You, you, so you see that? So if we were already in him, when he went to the cross, guess who went with him? Now this is what you haven't seen. This is what you haven't seen. This is what the theologians have not seen. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15 that just as we bore the image of the earthly, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly. What is he saying? We looked at that and we thought about our new bodies. But it's more than that. I'm bearing the image of the heavenly now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on now. Just like Jesus could say, when you look at me, you see the Father. I can say, when you look at me, you see the Father. When you look at me, you see God. Because I am the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Glory to God. I am in the Father, I'm in the Son, and they are in me. This is their body that I'm living in. Glory to God, when they saved me, they took me out of my flesh. My flesh died. They wrapped me up, tied me up, tangled me up inside of them. They wrapped me up, tied me up, tangled me up inside of them, and then come back into my body. And my life is not hidden in them. But what's touching the flesh? I am not touching the flesh. Come on, who's touching the flesh? God is touching the flesh. And Jesus is in God. Amen. And this is the temple of God. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's why the scriptures say the body belongs to God. God is touching the flesh. That's why, glory to God, we, when we receive the Holy Ghost, we lost our desire for sin. Why? Because we took on a new nature. Now, if the devil, if the devil can live in here and provide the flesh with the nature of sin, how much more can God come in and, and provide us with divine nature? God has given us divine nature. That's why we don't crave sin anymore. Glory to God, we don't crave sin. That's why we get convicted when we sin. Because the body belongs to God. It's no more I that live, but it's Christ that liveth in me. Clap your hands and tell him thank you. Come on, we can give him some praise up here. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Please tell me y'all learn something. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
Okay. You must not. You must not been getting um. You must not been getting my um email. I said all the partners get the lessons free. That lesson was free, right? Because you're a partner. You already given every month, right? So, so I didn't. You didn't have to pay for that lesson. Unless you choose to. Unless you choose to. I asked you to give me a five dollars. Don't tell me you ain't got five dollars a week. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh huh. I don't care about that. <laughs> I, I I know exactly what you're saying, and there are a lot of people that are on limited budgets like that, and I really appreciate those who are already partners. You know, uh, I would never exclude them from anything I was doing because they are my partners. They they help me every month. I can depend on those partners that are giving every month. Amen. Uh, I just ask them to invest five dollars in other people's souls. You know, it don't, it don't have nothing to do with nothing but that. If they if they chose to to give five dollars a week to purchase this to help us keep from coming, because see these young men that's traveling with me. Glory to God, I, they, they have to eat, I have to feed them, they have to sleep them, I have to pay for plane tickets, I have to pay for the equipment that they, that they use, I have to have them on site with me so that if I might be in Timbuktu next Monday when that session starts. So I got to have a Daniel with me so that he can stream it from wherever because it's live. Then I have to pay them. You know, they have they they are young college grads. They need they and that chose to work for the Lord instead of the secular world. I took them off. I took both of them. Uh, Daniel is a was was working for a hotel chain. He's working for a hotel chain in Jamaica, uh, the largest hotel chain there. And and uh, as their graphic special, you know, their uh, IT. He was an IT man there, information technology, and I took him off his job to, to work for Bible teachers. And Yannick right there next to him is in what that thing is, an actual, actuarius, what do you, how you pronounce it? How you pronounce that? An actuary? That's it. That's close. He's an actuary. He's some people that, that analyze for the government, he's working for, for these people that work with the government and the school boards and all that to analyze all their data and, and, and whether they can afford this or that or do this or do that, set budgets and all that stuff. These are professionals that quit their job to work with me. Amen. So, so that's, that's the only reason I asked for the $5 so that I, so it helped me feed them. It helped me pay for their plane tickets. I spent I spent a thousand dollars in plane tickets just for them to be here. And the only reason that you're stream right now today, you're stream we're streaming this all over the world, right out of Miami because they're here. You know. So I said to the partners, I know you paying. I know you're a partner with me, and I would never exclude you. But I asked the partners as well as everybody else because this is so crucial. To help me out here, give me a, give me that extra five dollars. Miss a miss a miss a, a lunch. Take take a five dollar lunch and say I'm gonna give this here to those young men to help Doc. You, you know what I'm saying? That's all. It, it's not. I would never ever because I the partners are so precious to me because you you can depend on those partners. Those partners and and some of those partners don't even have uh, uh they don't even do the. The, the monthly thing off of their, their thing, they go in and do it manually and pay their money every month. So that's a blessing to me. That's a blessing to me. And if I'm doing, and when that split takes, you know, when that, that split comes, oh no, the partners will be in that. They definitely, because they are partners. But I'm saying even to the partners, this is evangelism. God got us in an evangelistic mode. And so all of us are having to sacrifice now. Every one of us having to sacrifice, so we take a take an extra five dollars each week and investing it in souls. 
Because when you send that link to somebody, a lady came in, a lady came in uh, the, the church over there in Jamaica the other day, and she was telling me how somebody sent her the, the link. And, and it changed her whole life. It changed her whole life. And so that's what it's all about. It's, it's about investing in soul. And, and, and I think, and I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, because one of the, one of the, um, one of the things that's a vexation to the Holy Spirit, one of the things that is really a vexation to the Holy Spirit, and I want y'all to, to really hear me on this, because the Lord is speaking to all of us. One of the things that really vexes God is for the, the people that, that hear this word daily, hear this word every week, but they do nothing about it. They don't try to get it to other people. They just glad that they getting it. And they just keep getting it and getting it and getting it. And then God sets a platform. That's why Yannick is one of the guys that's traveling with me. Because one of the things that he's doing is, is he's bringing that element into the ministry that the world has when they're doing something. The world markets and they, they advertise and they get their stuff out there so people will know it, right? And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get us, you know, all over social media and so that people will know what we're doing, getting us all, all over the world. And and, uh, and this young lady here, uh, she's a professional, the one walking around there with, right there, that one right there with the, with the yellow, that's uh, Gigi Riley. She's the executive director of MBM. And uh, she, she, which happens to be my niece, and, but she can't go back to work on her job no more. She can't go back to no secular job no more. She has to run the GTC and run this whole operation. And and these are professionals. These are not people that, that didn't have no jobs. And, and you, you know what I'm saying? These, these people that had jobs, glory to God, and, and just laid them aside and said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work for God. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And, and let me tell you something, Saint. Sometimes these guys, you know what, you know what these guys get. Sometimes, if we have it, fifty bucks, fifty bucks a week. That's what they get. Fifty dollars if they have it. When we make a little money, glory to God. If, if when we get through paying all the bills, whatever we got left, I just kind of divide it up. I got Amy, I got Charlene, I got Yannick, I got Daniel, I got Reagan. And I got all of the BTBN staff that you don't even see here that's working in Jamaica. And, what, and we living out of the crumbs. We living out of whatever. If there's, and if there's nothing left after we pay the bills, we don't get nothing. Is that the true stuff? Y'all been living, you, you been behind me a long time. Sometimes we just stay, we just stay home and say, well, we got, we got any hot dogs or something in there? Glory to God. Amen. Do we have any hot dogs in the freezer or some? some tuna fish or whatever that's how we live we live like that so and that's just the truth and i'm dr banks the head of the whole ministry and i don't ask people to do nothing that i'm not willing to do i don't ask them to do nothing i'm not these guys will tell you if they're working i'm working right they're willing to stay up 12 15 16 hours of work does dr banks stay there 12 15 hours of work I work right along with them. I don't ask them to do nothing I'm not willing to do. I don't ask them to make no sacrifices I'm not willing to make. And if I and and, and I if I have to take my if 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 I can't pay a bill, if I have a bill or something, glory to God, if the ministry need it, the ministry got it. My bill will have to wait. That's how I live. That's how I live and that's how I'm training them to live. And we happy though. We really we happy. Because ain't nothing like serving the Lord. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing like serving God. And so, so that's why I don't have any, I don't feel any guilt. You know, when, when, I, when I come to the congregations and I say, look, y'all, just give me five more dollars. You know, to help me with the staffing so that we can have a spirit of excellence. We can bring you the technology. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to consider now, each one of these churches is an individual church. I guarantee Miami ain't got no whole big old bank account where they can afford to be run, throwing cash all over the place. And, and, and there's not a church in our organization that's got no extra money. And that's just the truth. 
So how do you think I do all of this? How do you think we got our own television network that we, I have to pay $1,000 to love every month? I have to pay for the fiber bill, which is $500 a month. I got to pay for equipment. I got to pay for Logic One, which is three fifty dollars a month. I got to pay for some transformer thing and all that foolishness every month. Where, do I, where am I getting all that from? Partners. And 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 if I if y'all give an offering today, I'm gonna pay some I'm gonna pay some my staff. You, you you know what I'm saying? If we get an offering today, it, but but I have come to a place like this, and 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 if I know if 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 I know beforehand that there's a financial bear, you know that the ministry is hurting here, I'm not gonna take no money out of here. If I know the ministry needs it to pay its bills, I'm not gonna take no money. So we just, I, I tell them, hey guys, we got to wait till we get to the next one. <laughs> the next one. We couldn't, we couldn't take none. We went to all the way to Georgia. We went all the way to Georgia to, <coughs> to our ministry up there. And we didn't take a dime. And it was two van loads of us that went up. I took all my technical staff. And Daniel did the training for those people that were there, uh, the, the, the people that worked the technology. He did try, took him so he could do the training. And so we took two van loads of people from Indian Town and Leesburg and Jamaica up there to, the, to this ministry. We didn't take a dime. We didn't take no money out of there. No, whatsoever. Because that ministry needed that money. So, but now I had to feed all those people. I had to house them, <laughs> you know. So it so it's costly. So I so I don't I don't um I don't feel guilty if if you got an extra five dollars. You you know what I'm saying? If I say look, just don't don't eat lunch today. Fast that day and give it to you know fast your lunch hour and give it to BTBN or give it to to my my tech team. That's the, that's that's where it is. It's it's not. That we're trying to make them because what we're gonna do with five dollars, unless a bunch of people give it, we don't have. That's not a lot of money for us, you know. But not. But when I, if if I think the last time Daniel was got paid was may have been two or three weeks ago. I think a couple of weeks ago. I think they got. I get. They got fifty bucks. <laughs> and Daniel told me that he said, "Boy, we done run out of money, huh?" <laughs> I said, yeah, baby, we out now. <laughs> I said, gosh. Hey, Amen. I said, the people of God don't give us nothing. We, we just go on to the next one. <laughs> Pray Lord. But we we, we going to do that. That's that's what we're going to do. But, and we're happy. Because what else would we rather be doing? You know, we, we work this ministry. We, we, we left our jobs and secular jobs by choice. We, we we didn't we did nobody compelled us. We left by choice. We do what we do by choice. Amen. And we have to tighten our belt. I told no that said we gotta tighten our belts. We might not be able to eat no stuff. I want some crab so bad tonight. Glory to God. Amen. I'm gonna be Sing and give me some crab. Say so I'm just putting it out there. If anybody wanna buy me some crab <laughs> Cause I've been in Jamaica, you know, you can't get these them, them dungeonous crabs over there like you do here at Rustic Inn. Oh Lord Jesus, Amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See what? Oh Lord Jesus, buddy. Yes, ma'am. What's your What's your question? <laughs> oh Lord, Amen. I don't care who goes. <laughs>